At any given time, hundreds of salamanders are being bred at the University of Kentucky. We have the only captive bred salamander population in the world um, where your people can call us up, they can ask for material, hey I want some embryos, I want some larvae, I want some adults, and we can do the breedings, we can make that those resources and ship them out nationally and internationally to folks. It's about 150 research labs around the world that, that work with salamanders at this point. National Science Foundation funds us to maintain that resource. With funding from the National Science Foundation, the National Institutes of Health, and the Army Research Office, biologist Randall Voss is studying salamander regeneration, something that may one day help people with spinal cord and limb injuries. Then I have NIH funding, which funds our genome resource development work. And so the salamander has a very large genome. It's a order of magnitude larger than the human genome. With these advances in DNA sequencing technologies that have happened because of the Human Genome Project, essentially every organism's genome will be sequenced. We're taking a very innovative approach. We're using a laser capture microscope that will allow us to isolate single chromosomes one at a time. And so our first set of chromosomes are being harvested this month. The Army is, is funding us on three different projects. And one is a project to describe how limb regeneration actually works, what we call an RNA level. And so genes are initially transcribed into RNA, and RNA is then translated into protein. What we're trying to do is build a model at that kind of RNA level of how limb regeneration is accomplished. Project two is to compare how different salamander species regenerate. And then third, the Army is also helping to support the genome sequencing work. Voss is studying a unique species of salamander that's found a way to postpone growing up. Aquatic amphibians, they start out as a single cell. They're very large and, uh, and they undergo a number of divisions and slowly take the form of a tadpole. But they maintain these kind of traits that make it possible for them to live in water. One of those characteristics are the gills. They're branching, they come out behind the heads, and they have large mouths for suction feeding. They have a killed tail fin for swimming. All the adaptations necessary to live in water. The ones that we work on, which are very unusual, come from Mexico. What's happened during the last few thousands of years is a number of these tiger salamanders have evolved this, this characteristic where they no longer go through a metamorphosis. First of all, they block their development to kind of maintain a juvenile look throughout the course of their life. They really are kind of like teenagers until they die because of that. Voss uses thyroid hormone to turn these perpetually aquatic teenagers into terrestrial adults. This allows him to find the genes responsible for variations in the timing of metamorphosis and genes linked to regeneration after metamorphosis. Can we identify genes that explain variation in some parameter of regeneration? There does seem to be genes in the genome that control the rate of regeneration. It's easy for us to imagine that our eye color can be blue or brown or a flower can have purple or red color and those are determined by one gene, but most of the traits that we care about are very complicated in their nature. And How long we live, how much we weigh, or the time at which we metamorphose, or the rate at which we regenerate, is probably determined by hundreds to thousands of genes. And each of those are making some kind of statistical contribution to that overall variation. In this complex research, Voss says UK offers him a number of advantages over other universities. He counts shared scientific equipment, like the laser capture microscope he's using to select single chromosomes, as one of those advantages. Somebody with very minimal training can go over there and just laser out small numbers of cells, or in this case, chromosomes. And so one of the great things about UK is that we've got a number of these kind of common core facilities and the instrumentation is there, the expertise is there to help you. The advantage that I see of a UK over some of the other universities that have a, a veterinary school, have a law school, journalism, engineering, arts and sciences, the, the whole nine yards, is that they really are commonly located. I'm in a biology department, which is in the College of Arts and Sciences, but my lab is in a building that, which houses primarily medical school researchers. And it's only a short 100 yard walk away 
for me to go back to my biology colleagues to see them. So that's a big advantage. Thank you.